Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode. Um, this is Nizam from Ecom Clips, your one-stop solution to any e-commerce problems. Today we have a very special guest with us and she's none other than Shibali Patel from Helium 10. So uh, Shibali is one of the brand evangelists of Helium 10. Um, so Shibali, um, it's nice to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So yeah, so Shivali is going to talk about uh, how to do project research for Amazon uh, using Helium 10 Black Box. So could you please tell us um, about Black Box and everything? Absolutely. So there are many ways that you can do product research. You can go into a store, take a look at a product, think, okay, maybe this is doing well on the internet. Check out Amazon yeah. and then, of course, do product research that way. Or you can go to a third-party site like Etsy, Pinterest, whatever the case may be, right, and go from there. Yeah. But Black Box is really unique because now you can sift through the data that Amazon has. Now, if you were going into categories and subcategories, which is what I did when I was first getting started selling on Amazon, it's going to take you a lot of time and energy and efforts to find things because... Amazon is such a large platform with so many different products, but yeah, Blackbox cool. lets you pull from over 2 billion data points, put in filters that you have in mind. Maybe you are a chef and you want to sell something in the kitchen and dining category. You can now go through, select that, and then start going further, be more granular with your searches and say, okay, I want to find things that people are searching up at least 3,000 times a month or at least 6,000 times a month, or maybe only 200 times a month. I'm going for something super niche that's still making sales. You can do all yeah. those things with Black Box. So let's go ahead and get into it. I think yeah. what I'm going to do is just share my screen and we can- Yeah, that would be through. fantastic. Yeah. We can that'd talk through the, the, the tool. All right. Now, hopefully you can see my screen okay. Yeah, yeah, we can, all yeah. Right. Okay, so I'm taking a look at the Insights dashboard right now. I'm just on the main page. You are going to, you know, see your account, go into your account. This is what you're going to see. I encourage you to open up your Helium 10 account and follow along. I think that's yeah. the best way to learn, the best way to do things. So I'm going to click tools and underneath product research, it says black box. So when you click that, you are going to come to this page. All right. Okay, yeah. So I'm taking a look at Black Box. There are several different tabs here. You have your products, keywords, competitors, niche product targeting, and elite analytics. We are going to focus on the first two tabs here. So the products tab is mm -hmm. going to showcase your product listings, and then keywords is going to show you a whole market. So just so you are aware, what I mean when I say both of those things is when you are checking out a product listing page, I'm going to open up a, a shelf here. So this is a product listing page. When you input any sort of queries into these filters and you are located on the products tab, it's going to output results to you that are going to take you into URLs that have product listing pages like this, where you have the add to cart buy now button. But if you went into the keywords tab, it changes a little bit. So I'm going to type in coffin shelf, not because it's like a morbid thing to type in, but it's our product, uh, our test listing mm -hmm. that we use. So this is our product right here, the Manny Sisters Oddities, but this is a search result page. And so it's really cool because now you can start looking at the market because it's not just the product itself that's going to be important when you are starting to validate that idea, but it's also going to come down to whether or not you can stack up to the competition. You are gonna have zero reviews when you get your listing up and running. So can you actually stack up with these other listings when you start ranking? Because for example, this right here, it has 1,834 results. But if this wasn't our product, right? And I started to actually compete, for example, this one has 33, is it still generating sales? That's what I wanna see. That is a sponsored result now. We want to take yeah. a look at the organic. So this right here is 33. Um, and, and we like to at least see that because now we know if that shelf is making sales by being in the top 10, even though it doesn't have the most amount of reviews, then we have, it's, it's sort of a, a feeling of validation, right? It's saying, all right, if yeah. I come onto the market and I can even generate 10, 10 reviews quickly, I can start 
um, still having enough social proof to generate those sales. So that's really what we're looking at with the comp the, the keywords tab, excuse me. Um, yeah. Let's talk about some of these filters in the products tab before we go into the keywords and we do an actual demo. So in the products listing tab, uh, there are quite a few things here, of course, that you can go through and you can select and filter through. I recommend that you do more than one search. The point of this is to help you start finding ideas. It's not so much saying, okay, we're going to run with the very first idea that we see. It's really to get you started and find things that you can then go in and further validate. I am going to talk to you about these number of images filters. So this is a great way to do what? This is going to help you find those product listing pages that are unoptimized because we like to see yeah. these listings having what? Seven images, maybe some video content, really nice product description bullet points because those words, those images, are the only thing that your prospective buyer has to go off of when they want to purchase something. So as opposed to, you know, when you and I go to a store in person, we have an employee that's saying, hey, how was your day? What are you looking for today? Can I get you different sizes? Can I get you something else? You know, you have these, these people to enhance your buying experience to help you get to what you're looking for. But on a product listing page on the internet, all you really have are your words and your images. And so you want to do a good job of optimizing them. And this is one way you can find unoptimized listing pages that you can then make even better and start capitalizing on opportunity. You also have the competitors. So if any of you watching are maybe not in private label, but you are doing arbitrage, you're doing retail or online arbitrage, you're doing wholesale, then you can go in and use these filters these filters are going to tell you. So for example, the number of sellers, if I typed in a maximum of two, I'm starting to look at my private label products, maybe people that have SKUs of FBM and FBA. But then if I typed two in as a minimum, that's going to help me find those listings that have several sellers on it, where now you start looking at the listings, you're going to be rotating no, by box. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it really depends on what you are doing on Amazon. Are you uh, doing something that, is arbitrage, then you still have, you can still absolutely go in and utilize black box to find products for yourself. You have exact brand search, exact seller search. So seller search, if I was on this listing and let's say that I have the seller that I know does arbitrage. And as opposed to me constantly trying to find new products that I have to go out and find this lower price point so I can sell it higher. I can now if I know that there's a specific seller that does that, I can go in, copy their sold by, and then type that in here. And so I can see everything else that they are selling. And I can just start researching backwards where now I know that this other person that's doing the same thing as me is selling it. And I can duplicate that as well. Okay, so let's jump into keywords. Those are just a few of the filters underneath the products tab. If you want to utilize them, like I said, great starting point. You can go in, start making lists of these URLs, but you will want to go a little bit more broad, understand what the market is as well, what keywords are associated with it. And we're going to talk about both of those mm -hmm. things with this tab. So we Fair have enough. different tabs here. I'm sure you're taking a look at it. And you're like, okay, well, there's no number of images. You don't have the seller search, the brand search. Yes, because this is going to take a look again at the overall existing market. So let's see here jump back into the overall search. This right, oh, excuse me. This right here is going to be what you end up seeing. So black box keywords tab. Let's type in some filters here. Uh, search volume, let's do 3000. That's just a hundred searches a day. Now you don't have to do the same. Is it something? Thing. Is it something like fixed that we should get, uh, start with three thousand, or uh, so we can just? Uh... No, I just okay. do. 30, I I just say three thousand to make it easy. But if you want, do you want to do a different number? Okay, okay, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. So, it doesn't matter. I typically so for our like viewers, it. for our viewers, uh, they can start with like one thousand, two thousand, three thousand. It's actually yeah. up to them. So how? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's let's go lower. Um, okay. it, it honestly comes down to what you're looking for. 
if you want to go into a hyper niche down, then you can go into maybe the lower search volume, but they're still making keyword sales. Um, yeah. So there's there's monthly sales right here. And you can use some of these filters in conjunction to, to emulate ideas that you have in mind. So for example, maybe when you're looking at a keyword, you want to see that you a couple of your competitors are brand new listings, but they're still generating sales, right? So then you can start using, okay, the age month, you want to see a maximum of maybe 18 months. They are brand new listings or they've been, or maybe 12 months, right? That's more brand new than 18 months is, but you want to find something that's maybe a little bit newer, but that's still generating revenue. And then you can turn that around and say, okay, I want to see different keywords that are established markets, but they're still scaling. So I want to see these listings that have been around for two years, but now they're doing 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 in revenue. So you can see this curve of the actual products you're looking at. Yeah. So it's a great way just to use in conjunction search volume. It, I have talked to people before that have a very low search volume, even as low as sometimes 300, 400. And those keywords are still generating sales for them because it's such a niche down product. Yeah, so it comes cool. down to, to where, where, what you're looking for, how niche you're going. Okay. Yep. We have a uh, monthly revenue. So of course, on average, how much th these keywords are making every single month, okay. you have your price point. If you go too low, just keep in mind that your profit margins might suffer a bit. If you go too high, you're going to need a larger investment capital because for example, yeah. things that are really large, like a couch or maybe something that is even electronics, you're going to start paying the higher price point items where if you looked at Alibaba or you looked at a different site, right, for sourcing or even if you're looking in the market that you're selling in. So for example, I'm in the States and if I found a supplier that was based in the US, it's still going to cost me a lot more upfront because it's a larger oh, item yeah. or it's an electronics item than it would otherwise. So um, just, just know that if you have a smaller budget, maybe a price point range is something you want to input in. Maybe we can cap it out here at 120 and do a minimum of like 20. It, it's again, it's really up to you. There's no right or wrong. You have your review count okay. review ratings and let's be real. We, most of us like to buy things that are above 4.5 stars because we have so many options. We like to pick the high quality products, right? If you're going to pay for something, you want it to be nice. Um, and review count, of course, you want to see some social proof. You know, you want to know that you're not buying something that's just not going to give you bang for your buck. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So so both of these things are, are great for that. You also have word count, which you might think, well, why is that important? Well, word count is going to tell you your buyer intent. If you think about longer tail keywords, so keywords that are maybe two words or more, three words or more, four words or more, those yeah. keywords are a lot more specific, right? If you and I typed in office, well, what am I doing there? What am I looking for? The algorithm is going to return a lot of, it's going to return a lot more broad of a search, first of all. Second of all, you don't know what your buyer's looking for. You don't know what you're looking for if you're typing that in. You're just kind of browsing for inspo. You're thinking, hmm, what could I put my put in my office? Or maybe, you know, you're you're browsing for gifts, but you don't know what to get that person. So it's more of a browsing search when you have a single query. But if you are typing in a multiple word query, then it ends up being super specific and you are targeting these this audience that knows what they want more in the long run. So if I said white marble keyboard mat, right? Now yeah. I know that this person's looking for something very specific and they probably yeah. are more at that feeling of like, okay, I'm ready to buy something than all of those other consumers were. So you can start typing in a minimum for word count if you want for buyer intent. So let's just go ahead and do two. We have categories. Okay. Now I am doing this live. Uh, and just yeah. to prove that to you, how about you can give me some some categories that we can select here? Any categories? Okay. Uh, I think you can go with uh, the beauty and personal care, I think. Okay. And maybe home and kitchen. Okay. Awesome. 
Um, so you guys can do as many or as little categories as you want. I'm just selecting two here, as you saw. He helped me pick them. Yeah, this actually basically the examples actually you're giving. Okay. Yep. So we have selected, uh, as I can see that you selected like uh, the search volume, you filtered it, you filtered the price here and the word count, three things and then the categories. So four things till now. Yes, so far. Okay. Yeah. Now okay. we'll talk about some of these other filters here, just so you know what they do. Now, if you forget what any of these things I said are, just hover over this little question mark icon and it's going to give yeah. you a summary of, of what it is. Uh, or you can also- That's really interesting. Yeah. That's very helpful. Yeah. You can also watch the learn button and the learn button is going to showcase uh, what all these different things or what the best way to use these yeah. tools are. And that's for any of our tools. It's not just for product research. Um, okay. okay. So we have keyword search, exclude keywords. The time of we us filming this, it's August. And so by the time that maybe October is coming around or December is coming around, you have these Halloween or Christmas themed things or maybe the volley themed things. It just really matters on what sort of period you're looking at. And for this specifically, you can start excluding or including different keywords. So maybe I don't want to see anything that's related to, um, you know, the, the Adams family for Halloween, or maybe I don't want to see anything for Santa Claus for Christmas. You can start, or maybe you want to prepare for something seasonal. Maybe it's June and you're, you're thinking, okay, can I get a product out for Q4? You can start including or excluding keywords. You can also select okay. sized here. So maybe you want to go for something small or large because you're thinking about Amazon storage fees. You have your number of sellers again, variation count. So different sizes, colors, all that stuff. But if you have variation count, yeah. You're for the like point. starting point, just a question: Like, uh, should we avoid the large, uh, large one, like uh, for the size tire? No, for the starting point. Then. I um, I actually have a friend in the space who says he loves to go for the the larger items specifically. Oh, because, I see. <laughs> because uh, um, because a lot of people do opt for the smaller size because of the storage fees or because of the the price point investment. Right, buying a yeah. couch is a lot different from buying, let's say, a, a, a knee pillow, right? So you are, it really depends on you. He likes to do that because yeah. he feels like it's a easier barrier to entry. There's not as many people that are buying larger items. Most people that are starting out like to buy smaller. So it really depends on you that you can find opportunity regardless of what you pick because there's so okay, many yeah. products on, on Amazon. Okay, so variation count, you're going to want to start thinking about different variations. You might have to put in a little bit more upfront because now you're trying to buy different colors or different sizes. Something to keep in mind. We talked about monthly sales. We have best sellers rank. We have the fulfillment type FBA or fulfilled by merchant. You have your month. And then let's talk about just some of these filters down here and then we'll click search. We have title density. So title density is what? Title density is going to tell you how many products on the first page have the keyword that we're seeing in the title. So the okay. keywords tab tells me this keyword. The output's gonna be keywords like this. And the title density is gonna tell me how many of these products on this first page have the keyword coffin shelf in the title. And why is this important? Because it is actually going to let you help or make it easier for you to rank. And this is great for you to estimate, okay, well, how easy will it be for me to rank on page one with or without PPC? So just yeah. something to look at, doesn't mean you have to use it, but it is a really cool feature that you can start just to extrapolate the longevity of your product. You yeah. also have competitor revenue reviews and ratings down here. Now you might be thinking, Shivali, why? is this down here when we just talked about this up here? Well, there's a little bit of a difference. These are averages of the market. This is gonna look at the top 10 products. So this is very exclusive to Helium 10 and it's really cool. I always like using it. Um, and right here you have one, two, three, four. Oh, just ended up going forward, jumping forward, but it's gonna look at the top 10 organic positions, okay? So when you're looking at okay. the top 10 organic positions, like I said before, it's going to help you understand uh, what you're looking at for when you start listing your product at zero reviews. So for example, for competitor um, reviews, right? Maybe I want to see that at least two of these products 
have less than 150 reviews, then that's going to say that at least two of the top 10 products have less than 150 reviews. You also have re revenue. So if I wanted to put in like, you know, a maximum of six or making more than 2,500, because I want to find something that's starting to pick up, or maybe that to me isn't enough. And I want to see things that are making more than 5,000. You have the ability to do that. Same thing for ratings. Let's go ahead and click search. Okay. Okay. First things first. We have over 200 plus keywords found. Now yours might say 20 keywords found. It depends on the search you're putting in. And I want you to know that that is okay. If you find something that is only 20, 30, 40, 100 keywords, that is actually a good thing because when you are going in and you are inputting filters, it means that you got super narrow. Now, if you're searching from Amazon, this is pulling from over 2 billion data points. It's really, the filters are there to help you save time. So you want to input things to get it down to the number of keywords that you can actually go through and search. But yeah. then go through, do a lot of different filters, a lot of different searches to start shortlisting ideas. What I encourage Ooh. you to do is shortlist 15 to 20 different keywords and then go from there, start getting more granular, start looking at these markets, start looking at the products and then validating that idea. I'll talk to you a little bit briefly about validating an idea in just a moment here. But we have 200 plus keywords because we went still quite broad with our filters. You have twin duvet cover, which is just the, the blankets that go on a twin size bed, I believe. You have your search volume here. It's gonna give you the historical information for that. So over 30 days, 90 days, one year and all time is that trend actually steady. I want to find a product that's evergreen maybe. And that means it's selling good yeah. all year long. Yeah. I want to start finding things that are seasonal because I'm preparing for Q4. Then I can drag and drop a certain period and I'll zoom in for me to tell me how the search volume is changing. So this one you can see skyrocketed from uh, yeah. 4,000 to 25,000. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. There's like a weird drop in oh COVID. COVID. Everybody was home. Everybody already had covers, I guess. So they prepared, didn't need them. And then they came back or something like that. Maybe, who knows? You have a $25 price range, roughly. Again, these are ranges, guys. So if you input 20 to 120, you might see a product that's going to be like 10 bucks or like 150, 200 bucks, because this is going to give you an average range. And that is why it's important that you always open up these markets. You have 23,672 for monthly sales. You have 594,000 for monthly revenue in this market. Bestseller rank of 88,000. Title density of 14. So 14 products on the first page have this twin duvet cover in their title. And then- So the just, just one thing. Uh, yeah. So having 14 uh, title density. So is it, I think, is it a good or bad sign? 14 is okay. I mean, like, how can can we be okay. I mean, there's obviously a lot more products on page one, so that's okay. it's not bad. But also, okay. if you see something like zero, zero means it's, good, right? just, it's it's good. Yeah, it's really good because then yeah, you can just yeah. go and put in bathroom dehumidifier and start ranking for this keyword. And especially if this is a keyword that has good search volume. Not to say that yeah. that's the only indicator of of you don't want to look at this and say, okay, this is it. You know. Because your yeah. product is not just going to be based on one keyword. It's going to be based on multiple keywords, right? You're going to be driving traffic from all these different words. When I say bathroom dehumidifier, or you say that, I can end up saying something different. I can start saying, um, I don't know, like bathroom on steamer. I, I don't even think that's a keyword. But let's say I didn't know anything about the market. And I'm trying to think of the keyword. And I can't think of the keyword. And the keyword that I yeah. end up in is bathroom um, you know, steamer, and I'm just hoping that it'll pop up in the search results. And so you yeah. want to start finding those keywords too, because you will want to rank for multiple keywords. This is a, a one fragment of, it's like one part of the puzzle. True. You also have your category, your fulfillment type, your size tier, variation count, average seller count, word count, and age month. Alongside last year's sales, best sales period, your sales to review ratio, and then broad reach potential. So what the uh, the reach could be for, if you typed in this keyword, for this keyword to actually do well in the broad match search when you are doing paid campaigns. You have your competing number of products. So this one says 792. If I were to open that up, um, now I'm still looking at the coffin shelf market, but this right here, 
776 is what it's telling me how many products are actually indexing for that particular keyword. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at some of these and then just open one up for the sake of time here. We have twin duvet cover, bathroom dehumidifier, portable air conditioner fan, media storage cabinet, uh, Zen garden for desk. What is a Zen garden for desk? Because I don't think they can fit a whole garden on. Okay, interesting. All right, so you have a Zen garden for desk. There's different types. I didn't even know this was a whole market. Did you? This is interesting, I think, because uh, you will get to know so many ideas that you never thought of. This, exactly. this is interesting. Yeah. Exactly. It's And it's the beauty of um, black boxes. You can find yeah. things that you never knew existed. You have a tax yeah, starter kit. At the same time, it saves a lot of time, actually. And, and you know, time is money. So, obviously. Money, you're right. This is a tattoo gun starter kit. So this is what I was talking about. You have a $13 product next to a $50 product. And also, this person is not abiding to Amazon's terms of service. <laughs> you need uh, the products on a white background. So if they're ranking for it, it's uh, interesting. And also, I like seeing when, when I go on a page, if not all the results are the same. You know, like all of these kind of look the same. Then I would have to start thinking, well, how can I come in and differentiate? That's one of those ideas that you can tie to validating product idea is what value can you add to the market if you broke into it? You have white queen comforter set, Halloween perfume. I didn't know people look up perfumes for Halloween specifically. Interesting. Banana boat tanning oil. Is this different? I know there's the, the banana boats that people use when they're going on. Um, their their date yeah okay so it's just tanning okay let's go back into the zen garden because for the sake of time here i just want to at least quickly talk about the the product validation methods but you will want to take your time sift through all those ideas like i said shortlist 15 to 20 and then you can go into the chrome extension if you don't have the chrome extension all you need to go uh, type in into your search bar is www.helium10 h e l i u m 10.com forward slash extension. So E X T E N S I O N. Yeah. It's going to get you to a page that's going to let you add it to Chrome for free. And once you have that installed, it's going to give you access to six different tools plus alerts. And the top three are available to use on a search results page like this. But if you go into product listing page, all six of them will be highlighted. And so you can go into things like review insights, meaning if you have thousands of different yeah. views, right? Actually, actually, uh, the extension of William is my favorite. Yeah. I always use it, always, every time. Yeah, so it's, it's something really very, awesome. Yeah. It gives so many data within seconds. I mean, like, super cool. Yeah, and it's an on-browser tool. So you can directly open it up yeah. Amazon and see all this information that you otherwise wouldn't have access to. So it's a lot of great backend data that you can yeah. see utilized to your advantage. Like I said, six of them. So all of these would be yeah. uh, usable on a product page, but you have review insights. So if you had thousands of reviews, guys, and you wanted to, for example, you're in product research phase, something you could do is go into a product listing page, click review insights, and check out the negative reviews to figure out what you do not want to do when you are sourcing this product. Yes, that's very important. That's very important. So those who are listening to us, uh, take, take this note. It's very important to look at the negative reviews as well because you can understand uh, which point you should avoid while you actually are taking a product or choosing a product. It's very important. Yeah, nice exactly. point. And I would even argue that you want to look at both. You you want to look at the positive reviews too because what are these products doing yeah, yeah. really well? Obviously. You need to do the, the stuff that works, but also meet the demand, meet what people are saying, meet them halfway and enhance that product, right? You can also go and do this after you've selected your product because then you can start using that information for your images, for your bullet points, yeah. for your yeah. product description, your A plus content. You can start building copy that is going to convert mm. because people are looking for these things. And you can address that concern that they might have when they're reading all these things because best believe yeah. they will be going into these competitors and reading the negative reviews. And if you can just address True. that from the front, that's that's a plus. That's a good thing. You have inventory yeah. 
levels. So if you, uh, let's say, are looking at a market where there's only one or two major sellers, then and they're running out of stock, then you know you can come in and capitalize on that opportunity because you can provide. But again, you have to be worried because you know if they're they're doing a turnover of inventory, they you just want to keep an eye on it as time passes. Yeah. You have profitability calculator, which I'm just going to open up here in a moment, but it's going to let you play around with numbers, with dimensions, with the price point you want to charge, with what your sourcing cost is, what your freight cost is. It's going to tell you your referral and your storage fee costs for Amazon. And then you can check out your ROI per unit and your net profit margins. So definitely, definitely 100% something you want to use when you're validating a product idea because... Money is important. Most people are in business because you want to make money. And I assume you are the same. I, I think I can make that safe yeah. assumption. And so you will want to make sure your product is cash flow positive. And that's a great way to do that. I always like to overestimate the numbers I put in. Um, not all of them, but at least, you know, I like to stretch my landed cost a bit. So the cost I input for manufacturing cost and freight cost, I like to make it a little bit higher just to build in a cushion. And you'll want to see that reflected as well. So play around with the numbers. And like I said, I'll just pop it open here in a moment so you can at least see it. Then we have ASIN Grabber. Mm -hmm. So if I'm too late for Q4 this year, but I want to have the information for next year, I can click ASIN Grabber, export that file into a CSV, and then use it next year so I know what's going to start peaking around that time of year. You have X-ray okay. keywords. Keywords are going to show you which keywords are actually... Uh, generating sales for these products here. And like I said before, keywords are important because you don't want to just rank for one keyword. You want to see that there's a multitude of keywords you will be able to do what, well in or that you will want to rank for. So for example, here you have Japanese decor. It's kind of more broad. Uh, Oasis Mini, Zen Garden for Desk, Office Decor. Again, these are the, there's a few broad ones in here. So this could be a good thing, right? And you could look at this and say, okay, well, if... These are the keywords. There's only 13 filtered keywords that a lot of these ASINs are ranking for. And even then they're sort of broad. What does that mean? Does that mean that this market is developing? It's brand new? Or does it mean that it's already established and it's just, it doesn't have as much of a demand? But then again, you have 3000 in search and it says search volume is increasing 8%, 33% while the other ones are going down. So maybe I want to start looking at, well, like, the the very specific ones are going up. So you can start interpreting your data from there. You, it tells you how many keyword sales are attributed to each keyword, competing number of products, title density again, and competitor rank average. So this is just going to tell me where my competitor um, products are ranking actually in accordance to what I'm looking at. Going back, uh, X-Ray is going to give you that 10,000 foot overview. That's the very first tab underneath Chrome extension. And it's going to show me a lot of similar information that I talked about in, for example, profitability calculator, which is it's going to tell me what the dimensions for all of these products are. It's going to tell me my uh, FBA fees, not my FBA fees, but the competitors FBA fees. It's going to tell me their sales graph, their sales, um, their, you know, how many sellers are on each listing, what their ratings are, review counts are, number of images, what their review velocity is. And of course their creation date. So you can go in and see a lot of really cool information, you guys. You have your search volume, historical information if you click the graph. And then this is our two-factor success score. You, you guys might have stars. You might look at this and be like, what? That's not what mine looks like. Well, that's because you go into the Chrome extension and you click the cog setting. It's going to let you select between a multi-factor success score and a two-factor success score. So mine is set up to two-factor, but you might have multi-factor, which is why you're seeing stars. But you can input revenue and reviews as you would like it. This is just going to look at that filter we were looking in black box that said, um, you know, at the very bottom, it said competitor reviews ratings that said we were looking at the top 10 products. And that's what it's looking at here. So I have 5,075. You guys can input in whatever you would like. If you want to see only 2,150, yeah. up to you. So that is just going to quickly, at a glance, tell you this. And then you have find suppliers on Alibaba. So when you click find suppliers on Alibaba, it's going to pull in information from Alibaba and like Blackbox and Cerebro and all the other great tools we have. You can put in filters. So maybe I want to only see verified suppliers and only suppliers that have trade assurance. So that way you are covered if you place an order with them on Alibaba. 
and it'll give you a price range. So this one costs $6 to $7 to make. There's a minimum order quantity of 20, meaning this supplier, you need at least 20 pieces to work with them. You can go in if it says 2000 or something crazy that for you is defined as crazy. Um, then you can go in and still message them and say, hey, I'm really looking to build a long-term business relationship with you. Are you willing to work with this just to start? And then, you know, of course we can build from there. So you can always ask, but this, just so you know, there is a minimum order quantity listed here, your, your lead time, how much it will cost you to make that product in terms of time, where they've worked, how long they've worked, uh, where they're based, if they're verified, what their ratings are and all that good stuff. So if I click this, it will take me into the Alibaba page where you can then contact that supplier if this is a product you want to start getting quotes for. So go ahead and do that if you find a product you are interested in. Now this says six to $7 going down, we see 10 to $12, you have three to $4. So you will wanna go through and check out several different suppliers before you make a decision. If I were to go into, let's say, the one of these Zen Garden products, then I'm just gonna close out of this right here. I think I'm going a little too fast for my, my browser right now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to uh, close out with a couple more details here. So let's say I selected... Just one thing about the supplier. Just uh, sometimes we see that um, the supplier we choose. Um, so is, is it better or what do you think uh, to like order a sample for the for um, making the other um, like orders and people making the other orders? Should we order sample, check the things and then move forward with that? Because sometimes, you know, um, when we order the like uh, larger quantities, then there might be like defaults or problems. So what do you think about that? If you should sample. Uh, so are you talking about like from the initial standpoint of sampling that product, like when you're first before you even place the inventory order? Yeah. Yes. So I always prefer to sample the product first. I know most of the people that I know in the Amazon space do too. I actually, I don't think I've... I don't think I've actually had the privilege of meeting someone who who just orders directly. I'm sure if you have a sourcing agent or something that uh, you trust to you know pick a good supplier, or good products, then you can maybe get away with it. But I usually recommend at the very least, if you're not going to order sample, at least video chat them and have mm -hmm. them show you their inventory, show you the details on camera, you know, really like up close and personal. So that way they... Um, yeah you can get a feel for the actual product, but I do encourage you to order samples because it is worth it. You don't want to yes. place order large amount of, uh, uh, you know, spend a good bit yes, of your money. Because for the, for the, like, uh, some, someone new who is, who is not that much experienced or maybe, uh, so it's going to be helpful for him as well. So maybe he will order, order like multiple quantities. So before that should, you should go for like the sample. Yeah. You can move forward. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You, I would recommend that you do. Or if you're not ordering samples and you're going to a trade show in person, like I said, there's many yeah. ways to do product research. You're going in person to a trade show or a Canton fair. That's a good way just to feel different products and uh, place your order from there. So there's different yeah. Zen gardens here. Keep in mind that somebody who's looking for a octagon or abstract Zen garden might not be the same exact people that are looking for a rectangular one. So you can start comparing products that are similar. So maybe I only want to do the circle ones, then I can just select the circle ones. Or I can go in and say, okay, I just want to select these uh, square ones. And that's going to be a specific more, more niche down, even past Zen Garden for desk. And then keep in mind that the first one I select is going to be my seed product. So when I go into things like Cerebro, which is a reverse ASIN keyword research tool, it's going to show me, excuse me, all the keywords that are associated to these ASINs that we selected. And whenever I select the first one, that's gonna be the product that it compares all the, the ones that follow to. You have run listing analyzer where you can go in, check out media comparison, see what all the graphics look like. So that way, when you are sending information to your graphic designer, you're trying to build out images, you can show them what your competitors have. And so you can say, okay, all of these have dimension images and lifestyle images where somebody is putting it on their desk and working next to it. I want those images. I want to have that in my listing. So make sure that you utilize it. Or you could say, all of these look the same. I want something that's different. So when I'm sourcing my product, maybe instead of a white uh, undertone, so all of these have this like white, you want to have a red one. So this one already has the coffins and garden, but 
let's say you wanted it to stand out more, right? Pop out more in the page, then you can input things from there by checking out the media comparison or the keywords with listing analyzer. So from, from these selected ones, right? Uh, you will want to get super granular. I'm just gonna open up one of these here. Let's go with this one. Now this does tell me revenue. So this one's making 6,000 on average per month. But I just wanna wrap up by showing you the profitability calculator here. And when I click the profitability calculator, as you saw on Alibaba, it said that this product was anywhere between what we saw like 10 to 12 range on the higher end. So let's say you did a bunch of customizations on this product. You wanted to have like a nice paper sleeve. You wanted to add some different things that people asked. Maybe they said this was too small. You want to go a little bit bigger. Or it's, it's too big. You want to go smaller. You can play around with these dimensions. So this is what I wanted to show you is let's say instead of $34, I want to price this premium, go 50. I'm going to have a different dimension. I'm going to go to 10. Um, let's say manufacturing costs, it's costing me 12 bucks to make. Maybe my freight forwarding is going to be um, $2.52 per unit. You have your FBA fees, your storage fees. If you have duties and taxes, maybe, I don't know, it's like 5%. It's going to show you your net. And so this is something you will want to definitely use when validating product ideas. So let's talk about this, This is right? kind of estimating the data, right? Like Yes. Estimating, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about this, right? Overall, mm -hmm. from everything we talked about, you have black box where you have 15 to 20 product list ideas maybe that you pull from the actual software tool. And then from there, you can go into validating your idea. So can you compete with the competitors that are there? Is, do we have thousands yeah. of reviews? Will you be able to go in and actually with zero reviews or 10 reviews or 30 reviews when you're getting started, be able to make sales? Can you differentiate that product? Will you be able to add value to the market? Are there other keywords that are related to that market that you will still be able to generate sales with? Or is it just the one keyword? And is it something that's picking up or is it evergreen? Is that a price range you want to work with? So, and then of course, last of all, is it profitable? So there are a number of different things that you will want to consider. This is really yeah. based also on your uh, risk tolerance, what you are willing to risk, what sort of things you have in mind. And it really comes down to you. That's how I'll put it. We always say at Helium 10, opportunity is not defined by us, but by you. And that is why we offer you so many filters so you can go in and use it and get the best products with the most informed decision with the established data that we provide. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, there are so many information, so so, ma so many things for new, new for me as well. And I think I believe that uh, the viewers uh, will find it very helpful. And um, so any anything, any last thing that you would like to mention about um, Helium and other things? I know that uh, the, the black box is, is still there are so many other fields as well, where actually you can talk about uh, maybe later on, but anything you would, you would like to mention? I will say that Helium 10 does have tools. I think sometimes people don't realize it for every single aspect of the Amazon journey. So whether you're doing product research, you're doing keyword research, listing optimization, you're doing operations, just things on a daily basis. You want to check out your profits, maybe you want to run ads. We do have something for every single part of your Amazon journey. So all you have to do, like I said, is click through the tools, go to a specific tool that you're looking at and click the learn button videos because they will tell you exactly how to use the tool. And the yeah. best way to learn is by actually being very hands-on. So until you actually go through the tool and use it, you, you're you going to yeah. learn more by using it than you will just by watching the video or listening. But I yeah. encourage you to take action because focus on progress, not perfection. You are going to make mistakes and yeah. how you approach those mistakes, the mentality you, you have, how you overcome them is just a standard part of being in business. So hang in there yeah. and congratulations on taking part of this really exciting journey. I commend you for being in business, starting a business, and I wish you much success. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So um, so maybe, yeah, that's it. Maybe we can uh, end up the call. And I'm, I'm really, very really glad to have you with us. And we, um, I believe that we'll talk more about Helium 10 and other things in our uh, upcoming episodes with Helium 10, obviously. So thank you so much. It was very nice to talk with you. Uh, you were so nice talking about everything in details. 
Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much. I had a pleasure being here. I hopefully those of you watching this added a lot of value to your day as well. We'll talk soon. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you.